What's up everybody, Niche.com recently released their list of top places to live in Washington state. So let's check it out and see what they had to say. So when I started looking at this list, the numbers seemed a little skewed because the top places to live were really just suburbs of certain cities and stuff like that. Or they were really t uh, tiny towns of less than 500 people. And neither of these things had like crime data or they just were, there's just no data. So the numbers were getting skewed because there was nothing bringing them down. So they were just A plus beautiful places to live. So I just I decided to check the box that says city so that we're actually getting the top city recommendations for Washington, assuming you're going to move to a place that have a larger population. In future videos, we will break down the best small towns to live in, the best suburbs of these specific neighborhoods and all that good stuff. So make sure to hit subscribe because we're gonna go deep on every major city, every corner of Washington, so that you can make a decision on where the best place for you to move is. For niche.com to create these lists, they consider several factors from housing, crime, schools, and amenities uh, provided, and a few other topics. And they get this info from using dozens of public websites, including the US Census, the FBI, and sending out their survey to hundreds of millions of people. And so people inside of all of these towns have probably filled out this survey, uh, giving their own opinion. So they can use fact and opinion to come up with the best cities to live in. Now in particular, I noticed that some of the housing data was a little off just because I think this housing data is from the last census, which obviously housing prices have increased a ton since then. So I'm gonna make sure to actually give you the most accurate housing prices for each city. Let's get right into it. Number seven on the list is Everett, Washington. Everett, Washington is located on the west side of Washington state, about a 30 minute drive north of Seattle, if you know where that is, and it's in Snohomish County. The current population is about 110,840, and it's considered more of a northern suburb of Seattle, but each of the larger uh, cities around Seattle have really become their own hubs of people, especially with people moving away from the cities as they can work from home a little bit more often. Maybe they don't have to drive into the city every single day, maybe just a few times a week. So the 30 minute plus drive with traffic isn't too bad. The city is in a beautiful location with the Puget Sound to the west, the North Cascades to the east, and sitting in the foothills of Mount Baker. Everett has its own very vibrant community with tons of art festivals, restaurants, and just lots of community activities to do. So you don't need to drive into Seattle to look for things to do. You will have them there in Everett, um, not needing to leave Everett to go find anything. So currently the average home price is 679,462, just shy of 680. And overall Everett was given a B minus rating by niche.com by doing really well in nightlife and diversity and receiving C's in crime and housing. And it does okay with B's, with good for families and their public school system. So overall, it's a good place for a wide variety of people. Next up, number six is Kent, Washington. Kent is also on the west side of the state, but is actually the opposite direction of Seattle. It is about 30 minutes drive, not including traffic south of Seattle, but it's still in King County. The population is just slightly larger than whatever it was at 130,038 people. And Kent is awesome because it hosts over 70 parks, many of them, or at least a few of them being waterfront, uh, whether natural or man-made. There's many small ponds or larger ponds, small lakes surrounding the area. It's also really not far from the Puget Sound itself. And instead of having Mount Baker, it has the monstrous Mount Rainier in the skyline. If you haven't been driving south in the Seattle area, to see Mount Rainier in the distance is honestly one of the coolest sights in all of Washington. Similarly, it's another great spot if you only need to make it up to Seattle maybe a few times, a couple times a week for your office job, but you're working at home, or if you are somebody that travels in and out of Seattle a lot for work, it is right next to SeaTac where the airport is, and so you would be a much shorter drive than if you lived in the city uh, to catch your flights. Currently, the average home price is $665,486, and it continues to get a rating of a B minus following a similar pattern as Everett, where uh, A, B's, and C's were all in the same categories. Number five is Vancouver, Washington. And no, not Vancouver, BC, although it is literally just on the other side of the border on the north side of Washington. We're talking southwest Vancouver, Washington, 
just north of Portland, Oregon. It's in Clark County, Washington, and could honestly be considered a suburb of Oregon, of Portland, Oregon, as many people are driving on either side of the border to work uh, every single day, because it's not a long trek to just make it right across the Columbia River. The current population is just over 180,000 people, but it seems to be growing very rapidly as there's tons of new construction going on. Um, if you're somebody that would rather have a new construction home, has a little bit more of a budget, then Vancouver area it might honestly be good for you because there's so much going on, so much building going on, beautiful new homes. If you're gonna live in other areas like on the coastline or over on the east side of Washington, there's a lot of older homes. And so Vancouver is actually one of the newer, uh, the cities that are actually getting built up a lot newer. Vancouver sits right on the Columbia River, which if you don't know what the Columbia is, it starts way up in the middle of Canada and works its way winding through the state of Washington. And if you've ever driven across the state, you've driven over it many times, but it is a massive river in some spots throughout the state and acts more lake-like in many of those places. So there's lots of opportunities for water activities, potentially having a waterfront property. You can still have your boat out there, um, jet ski, water ski, whatever you wanna do. There's tons of opportunity to do that in Vancouver on the Columbia River. The current average home price in Vancouver is $518,425. And Vancouver broke the B minus territory and made it up to a B, being rated just a little bit higher in the good for families category. Number four is Tacoma. Tacoma is a little further south than Kent, Washington. It is kind of smack dab in the middle between Seattle and Olympia, our capital. Uh, and it's about a 45 minute to an hour drive to either of those, if, that's, if those are cities that you need to access often. The current population of Tacoma is a little bit larger at 215,766. And one of the random things it's really well known for is the glass museum or the museum of glass and the glass bridge that leads from that museum into the downtown area. It's actually a very beautiful destination, something that's very interesting. They have these big glass towers on the bridge. So if you're into just, if you're driving through or driving in the area, it might be a good spot to just go check out for fun, just cause it is one, it's a unique piece of art for sure. Tacoma has an even closer proximity to Mount Rainier. And it's also not far from the Olympic National Forest. So if you're somebody that likes hiking, likes camping, this Tacoma is a good city that you can drive very short distance to be deep in the woods uh, in either direction. Currently the average home price is $514,336, which is a 14% increase from last year, which is actually one of the lower uh, levels of increase across the state. Tacoma made it into the B plus category, but follows along the same patterns as the cities we've already talked about, it continues to struggle with housing and crime, just like the other cities. Number three is Spokane, Washington. Spokane is the second largest city in all of Washington state. And the thing that makes it the most difference from the, all the other cities we've talked about so far is that it is on the east side of the state, like the very far east side of the state. Spokane is located in Spokane County and currently has a population of around 220,000 but that is just Spokane proper. There's also the Spokane Valley and many surrounding smaller towns around the area. And that brings the population up to around five to 600,000 if you were including the entire Spokane metro area. Spokane has many beautiful parks. It's surrounded by 78 lakes within an hour drive with multiple ski resorts in the area. And so it is great for people that like to get outdoors in all seasons. It is more of a small town feel, even though it has the bigger population. Uh, we only have a few buildings that are about 20 stories tall and the rest of Spokane tends to live in the four to six uh, story tall in, in terms of downtown. There's quite a bit of suburban area in Spokane from the out of towners perspective, from people that I've helped move into Spokane, they tend to think that Spokane is actually more spread out than they had imagined when they uh, were first looking into it. Currently the average home price is $427,889. So quite a bit more affordable than any of the cities on the west side that we've looked at so far. And you'll find, even though we have two more left, it is the most affordable city that we are going to be looking at today. Overall, Spokane received a B plus rating from niche.com, receiving a better score for housing just because it is a little bit cheaper, but still struggling in crime for sure. Number two on the list is Seattle. 
Seattle is Seattle. I've been using Seattle as the basis for telling you where some of these other cities were, uh, but I would assume most of you know roughly where Seattle is. It is located on the west side of Washington State, bordering the Puget Sound, and is in King County. The current population of Seattle is just over 740,000 people, but it's definitely well over a million if you start including the suburbs and small towns that, small cities that surround it. Seattle has been home to major tech companies like Microsoft, and Amazon, Boeing at one time, and despite people leaving other major metropolitan areas, Seattle is definitely a booming city and still growing rapidly. It's pretty affordable compared to some other major cities, so I do think more and more companies are going to be moving their headquarters over there and benefiting from the no income tax here in Washington. Seattle is truly a beautiful city. It has been struggling with some homeless problems here and there, making the streets a little bit more dirty than they have been in the past. But overall, the benefits can outweigh the cons, being just an hour away from amazing national forests, the ocean, the Puget Sound, and many lakes as well. Currently, the average home price is $960,000, so you definitely will have to bring your wallet if you wanna live in the city of Seattle and get all of the benefits that come with it. Overall, Seattle actually got an A plus rating by niche.com for having great diversity in nightlife, but also great public schools and just being good for families overall. They they still obviously struggle with housing, especially affordability and crime rates as well. And the number one spot here in Washington state is Bellevue, Washington. Bellevue, Washington is just across from Lake Washington in Seattle and is still in King County. For most Washingtonians, at least a Washingtonian that grew up on the east side of the state, not necessarily a Seattle local, I always considered Bellevue more of a suburb of Seattle. But like I said, things have been growing so much that it's definitely its own city, its own metropolis from here on out. Bellevue had started in the early 1900s as the weekend getaway spot for people in Seattle, but now has grown to to the fifth largest city in all of Washington. But it does continue that weekend getaway vibe as being the mecca for high-end uh, shopping, high-end stays as in hotels, um, and just a place where if you got money to spend, you can you could definitely do that in Bellevue. But even though it is kind of a ritzy area of Washington State, it also does have its own just normal suburban areas with tree-lined streets, beautiful parks, and hiking trails all around the island that it's on. Currently, the average home price blows everybody out of the water, being at an average of $1.5 million dollars to live in Bellevue. So for you Californians maybe watching this video, that might be like a one-to-one. -one. You might be able to find a cheaper home in, in Seattle or one of the surrounding cities around Seattle, or for sure, you could go buy three houses for the price of one over in Spokane, Washington. Obviously, Niche.com gave Bellevue an A-plus rating for having excellent culture, nightlife, and diversity, but also amazing schools and being very good for families. Crime and housing options for the people that can afford houses we're also rated slightly better as well. But that is it for our top cities here in Washington. How do you think niche.com did? Leave a comment down below if you think you would change the order or add a city to it. I hope you found this video helpful if you're moving to the area and be sure to subscribe, stick around because we'll make more videos going more in depth on every area that we talked about today. If you need a realtor in our state, just fill out the form below and we will see you in the next video.